Welcome to your favourite day of the week, everyone, where it's our favourite time of year again. We're going up until Christmas, we're going through strange, funny, and absolutely downright bizarre stories which have happened in history. Last time out, we went through the most British man ever, and this time, I've got quite the cryptic crossword clue for you. So let's see what's behind our next door. The crossword which almost foiled D-Day. On June the 6th, 1944, thousands of Allied troops landed on the beaches of Normandy in the largest seaboard invasion in history as they began the liberation of France and ultimately the victory for the Allies on the Western Front. Now the Germans knew an attack was coming, however they didn't know where it would be, so the Allies created vast deception plans in order to deceive the Germans to think the attack's coming somewhere it wouldn't be. They used inflatable tanks to fool German reconnaissance planes into believing they had more tanks than they actually did. Fake radio transmissions were used to make believe that allies might land in Norway or Calais. With the massive misinformation, the Germans couldn't concentrate their forces in one location to defend against the incoming invasion and had to spread their army out along the Atlantic Wall. However, it seems the Germans may have actually caught wind of the allies' plans, as in 1994, crossword answers related to D-Day's secret code names began appearing in the British newspaper The Daily Telegraph. The man who comprised these crosswords was Leonard Dorr, headmaster at Strand School, which was adjacent to a large military camp of US and Canadian soldiers who were preparing for D-Day. Security around the camp was minimal, and the schoolboys and soldiers would often talk to each other, and it's likely that some of these codenames would have been overheard and shared between the two groups. Dawes often got the boys to help him create his crosswords, and as a result, war-related military codenames got into them, with Dawes saying he did not realise they were military-related. On the 18th of August 1942, a day before the Dieppe raid, the word Dieppe appeared as an answer with the clue French port causing a security alarm as they believed the crossword was being used to pass intelligence to the enemy. An investigation though found it was just a happy coincidence. However, in the months leading up to D-Day, more happy coincidences started appearing in these crosswords. Gold, Sword and Juno, which were code names for the D-Day beaches where the Allies were to land, appeared, but these are common crossword answers, so they were again chalked off. Between May and June, five more D-Day related words appeared in Utah, Omaha, Overlord, Mulberry and Neptune. The coincidences were now too much, and Daw and the crossword complier were arrested and interrogated intensively. It was decided in the end they were both innocent, and Daw asked the boys where they had got these codewords from. He was alarmed at the contents of their notebooks, and ordered them to be burnt, and lectured them about the security required during wartime. So in the end, it seems these schoolboys were just playing a funny little game, and Daw was none the wiser. However, how differently D-Day could have gone if the Germans started doing British crosswords in their spare time. So thank you for watching everyone, I've been Jamie's Day, your favourite day of the week, and these were the crosswords which always ruined D-Day. I hope you've all enjoyed, and join us next time for where we go through a man who was full of piss. I'll see you all then, peace.